Good morning. Good morning. Now you do need to press the button. Each and every time. So my name is Reverend Jim Merson. It's so good to have you here today. Welcome, welcome on this beautiful day. We we get some sunshine today. I'm so happy about that. Hey, I'll I'll clap for that. Yes, sunshine. So we have our beautiful Advent candles here today. Today is the second week of Advent. So today we enter into that second week as a spiritual journey towards Christmas. Today we light two Advent candles. We're relighting the first candle that represents hope and faith, and then lighting for the first time that candle that represents peace. Peace in our lives and peace in our hearts. Both of these candles represents the increase of light within our lives. And as we light that candle of hope and faith, let us awaken to that spiritual awareness of that gift within our lives. Hope and faith. Our candle today is for peace. And with that additional light, we establish peace inside ourselves. So we welcome into our hearts that concept of peace. So we, so we affirm, let us affirm these concepts of the Advent within our lives as well. I'm going to ask you to join me in, in this affirmation. I will say it first, and then I will ask you to join me together with this. But our affirmation for Advent this week is I embrace the fullness of peace within my heart and soul. So together. I embrace the fullness of peace within my heart and soul. soul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So welcome to Unity of Charlotte. We welcome all of you, whether you're here in person or whether you're on Zoom with us, we welcome you. Or if you're watching this recording later on during the week on, on YouTube, the, uh, the awesome thing about YouTube is whenever you get a, an itch to watch the service, you can watch that service on YouTube at 3 a.m. in the morning if you wish. So uh, if that's you, if it's 3 a.m., welcome, 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 welcome. So again, I'm Reverend Jim Merson. This is Unity of Charlotte, a place where we nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. And simply put, that means that we're here to love grow, and serve. And you can see that on our slide as well. I'm, del I'm delighted to see everyone here and everyone online as well. If you're here for the first time uh, within, uh, personally here in the uh, sanctuary here for the first time, um, raise your hand, wave at us, and we'd like to give you a, a little thank you for being here. But it um, looks like we've all been here once before. So know that if online you are visiting us for the first time, know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. I invite you to reach out if you're, even if you don't know us very well online, on YouTube, or even here in person, I invite you to reach out to either myself or somebody else in the congregation as well. To get us to get to know us better as a spiritual center, as Unity of Charlotte, or as Unity in general, or even as New Thought in general, we're here to answer any of your questions and hopefully make you feel welcome as well. And you can check us out on check us out online. We have a website, 
communitycharlotte.org. And we have a weekly newsletter uh, for the individual uh, gatherings and events that we have as well. So sign up for that newsletter as well. So let us today say our unity prayer for oneness. So together, there is one presence and one power in the pandemic and the universe. Um, if you or a loved one is in need of prayer, know that you can always ask, always ask us for prayer. Give us a call, um, email us, and we will definitely pray with you. There's also other ways of reaching out for prayer. You can uh, call the Silent Unity number. That number is 816-969-2000. And that, um, that number is also on our website. Or what I like to do, and in fact, I utilize this almost every day um, during my week, is there is a You Pray app that you can download onto your smartphone, and you can request a prayer through your smartphone app. And um, you can you can check a box if you'd like a response, and they will write you an email or not. I usually say no, um, but it um, joins the thousands of prayers each day that get prayed over from Silent Unity um, at the village. So those are other ways of joining in for prayer. Our daily word for today is peace. I am centered in God. I am a peaceful presence. Stepping away from the busyness of holiday preparations, and the important work that we must complete before year's end. I continue my Advent journey by practicing peace in the present moment, wherever I am. I am gracious with store clerks and servers in restaurants. I add positive, peaceful thoughts to conversations. When I'm traveling, I bless other drivers with whom I share the road and my fellow passengers on public transportation. Peace flows from that place in consciousness where God's presence fills my awareness. I need not find a quiet corner. When I'm willing, anywhere can be a peaceful sanctuary. The peace of God refreshes me and goes with me as I return to the activities of the day. Wherever I go, Whatever I'm doing, I am a peaceful presence. And from the Old Testament book of Psalms, may the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Centered in God, I am a peaceful presence. So a few announcements before we uh, move on. Um, Special services for this year's Christmas season, holiday season. We've got a few things, so save these dates. We have a celebratory service Sunday, December 18th. What's that? Two weeks, I guess, two weeks from now. And we are meeting, not here. Again, everybody hear me. We are meeting at the Doubletree Suites on Carnegie. Is that how you pronounce it? Carnegie. 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 Okay. Carnegie Boulevard. Um, and after that 11 a.m. service, we will have some goodies, some treats, some, some food to, um, to participate and, um, and socialize with. So December 18th, 11 a.m. at the Double Tree Suites. Christmas Eve service will be here. That's Christmas Eve, December 24th, 7 p.m. here at 7 p.m. for that candlelight service. And that's always one of my favorite services. Uh, the next week, which is New Year's Eve, will be the Burning Bowl and Letter Writing Service. So December 31st, the evening at 7 p.m. again. So Christmas Eve, 7 p.m., New Year's Eve, 7 p.m. here. Both of those will be here. And then the Whitestone Ceremony, the week after that, so January 8th, that will be here in our normal time slot, 9.30 a.m. So that's the, uh, the Whitestone Ceremony. So any of those services, bring a friend, um, invite others to join you. If you've got family visiting from out of town, 
drag them here with you. And um, they will appreciate it. I'm sure I don't want to say you're back in here. Um, there will be no Sunday service on Christmas Day or New Year's Day. So hear that as well. Um, we're having the Eve services. So uh, nothing on Sunday for Christmas Day or New Year's Day. Um, so no, I, I know as well that as Reverend Lisa and I become more familiar with the order of service, that is the reason I'm up here uh, today. And that's why Reverend Lisa was up last week. We still want to incorporate platform assist and platform leads. We'd also like to incorporate the idea of um, daily word readers as well. So um, know that um, if that speaks to your heart as something that you would like to join with us and participate on a Sunday, we envision uh, volunteering once a month, maybe. It could be a, a, daily, a daily word reader once a month. Maybe you pick the first Sunday of each month to read that. Um, and, and similar with the platform assistant. Pick a week and maybe you do that once a month so that we have a rotation of folks up here helping with it. So um, that's kind of what we're thinking of. Platform leads, daily word readers. Um, and we are also kind of moving to a different topic. We're also looking for volunteers on Christmas Eve candlelight service. We're looking for some ushers to help us hand out candles because everyone will have a candle that they're, they will be lighting as well. So please um, see us after service and volunteer to be an usher on Christmas Eve, and uh, that will help us out as well. Ongoing offerings, the uh, Affirmative Prayer and Meditation Group uh, meets on Zoom the first and third Tuesday evenings, um, 7.15 p.m. to 8 p.m. That is facilitated by Barbara. Um, and if I get any of these wrong, shout out. Tell me if I can get in the wrong day or the wrong time. Uh, the Dialogue and Service Group meets on Zoom Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Creative Thinking is the current book, also facilitated by Barbara. Um, the men's group, the Unity Men's Group, meets in person here uh, the second and fourth Wednesdays at 9.30 a.m. I'm looking forward to um, being at my first men's group uh, coming up here soon. So 9.30 a.m. On, uh, on Wednesdays, second and fourth Wednesdays. And the Course in Miracles group is on Zoom. That is Thursdays at, each Thursday at 9.30 a.m. That's kind of a group event. Reverend Lisa will be connecting with the individuals this week as we plan a way of giving in this holiday season. So we're looking for ideas. We're looking for uh, a chance to be able to, to serve our greater community. So outside of our own walls, we're looking for a way. Uh, and maybe that is a food drive. Maybe that's a toy drive. Give us ideas. What, if, what, what has worked in the past? What is strong in your hearts? Well, what else am I? What else are we looking for? Just excitement about something. Give us ideas. Um, and um, know that everything that I've talked about, all of these activities that I've talked about, um, are on my website as well, unitycharlotte.org, and probably more up to date is our newsletter. So if you haven't. Sign up for the newsletter, please do. You can do that. Um, Alan, you can do that on the, off of the website. So you can do that off the website, or you can send, send us uh, your, your request and we'll add you to that as well. So um, let's move into our affirmation for our new space. And uh, we will uh, say this together. Oops. We will. There it is. Our affirmation for new meeting space. So together. We are affirming that we have a new home, a new charter that fulfills every need of the space and use in order to support and fill up our new home and goodness to be loved, grow, and serve. And so did we. So before I introduce our message for the day, and uh, it's no secrets. It's going to be Reverend Lisa. But I did want to uh, just tell a very quick story, a very quick story. 
don't want to take up too much of her time. And she goes up there with message and meditation. And oh, before we do our song, well, our song is now. We do have two songs. Did I skip over the song already? <laughs> Let me tell my story first, and then we move into the song. That's all right. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me for being out of order. That's okay. I mean, like, like, well, let me tell uh, our, the quick story of how Reverend Lisa and I met. Um, we are co-ministers here at Unity of Charlotte. We're so grateful for that opportunity. Um, we we went through ministerial school. We went through seminary together. Um, and it was uh, a true joy, along with all the hard work that it was, uh, because we did. We both worked and went through the ministry, which is like going through um, graduate school full time. It really is. It, it's, um, um, but we did it, and we did it together. But my story is uh, is about how we met before that, how we um, joined together in our unity. Um, and I had been going to a unity in Jacksonville, Florida, for many years. In fact, um, maybe 10 years. Um, and uh, we were having a new members class. And our new members class was always one of my favorites because it was, it was like an, an update for me. I'd heard these things before, but I wanted to hear them again, right? So I would attend the new members class almost every year. My friend Michael and I decided to come to this uh, new, new members class. And who was sitting there, but somebody new, somebody new to our church. And she was sitting a few rows in front of me. I don't know, there might've been 30 people in the room at that time. And uh, Michael and I were very comfortable uh, sitting in the back row. Um, you know, we weren't quite uh, heckling, but you know, we were very comfortable in that back row. Back row. And um, through, throughout, the, throughout the class, um, Lisa would raise her hand and ask a question, and it was, that is an awesome question. And, um, and, and in fact, I, I would lean over and, and, and ask Michael, why didn't you ask that question? You know, um, it was such an insightful question. And, and two or three times this would happen until I decided, okay, I, I've got to introduce myself to this woman, and, uh, and the rest is history. So um, we actually got married in that same church. And um, so that's how Reverend Lisa and I. Um, Reverend Lisa, her plots. Her plots. Thank you, Reverend Jim. Oh, that song was beautiful, wasn't it? Oh, it just opened my heart and was just the perfect way to come into our topic for today, which is peace. But let's begin by looking at the fact we just sort of wrapped up Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that good stuff, all that busyness and activity, and now we're into full swing moving into Christmas. And it's generally a pretty busy time, isn't it? Can get a little hectic. Um, and also to make a note that we're, we're celebrating a lot of other, December's a huge celebration month across faith traditions and even some non-faith traditions. And I, I just want to mention that Hanukkah is going to be happening and Kwanzaa happens from December 26th to January 1st. So there's a lot of celebration going on. But for those of us who are celebrating Christmas, one of the traditions is the line of children waiting to sit on Santa's lap to talk to him, right? Have any of you ever done that when you were small or have kids heard him to go do that? Yeah. Well, there's this one little girl waiting in line with her mom, very excited, very happy, just can't wait to see Santa in person. And her turn comes up. And she climbs onto Santa's lap. Her smile is from ear to ear. Her eyes are alight. And Santa turns to her and says, so what would you like for Christmas? Well, upon hearing this, 
Her smile disappears, her jaw drops, her eyes open in horror. And she says, Santa, didn't you get my email? <laughs> so I guess that's a sign of our times. Um, I just, I laughed when I, I heard that. I wanted to share that with you. Bring a little lightness and laughter to our holiday season because it should be light and happy. Um, along with all of the things that we're, that we're working on doing. Now, it's a busy time and it can be stressful. And it can also be for some people, the holidays can, can be difficult and challenging, uh, especially if maybe they're grieving the loss of a loved one who isn't here anymore. Um, the holidays tend to really bring things like that um, into our heart stronger, or maybe they're, they're, they're challenged with a health issue or, or some other challenge in their life. So we want to remember there's a lot of things that happen at Christmas, but the message, especially for this week, we looked at hope and faith last week as the first week of Advent. Hope being that, that glimmer of what is coming and faith being the certainty of the fulfillment of that arrival. And now we're in peace and we're going to focus on peace because how much are you experiencing peace this holiday season? How are your days going? And those that you are, are around you, is peace being expressed? So we're going to look a little bit more about what that means for Christmas. When, well, let me start with Emily Cady. Emily Cady is a, a foundational teacher um, at Unity. And she wrote in her book, How I Use the Truth, that peace is a divine quality, an attribute of God. Therefore, it is a part of our own spiritual nature. Peace is a divine attribute, which is already a part of who we are. Now, I love that because that means we have that peace within us already. But we tend to think about peace in a lot of different ways, don't we? Uh, sometimes we think about peace simply being the absence of conflict. But so that could just be neutrality. It could even mean it's just a standoff. And peace is really so much more than that. We might think of peace as a very passive state. But we're going to find out today that peace is found both in the stillness and in action. And I think this is critical because when we move from the peace in the stillness to peace in action, we move, we move into a whole full experience of what the power of peace really is. So let's dive into that. In Hebrew, the word for peace is shalom. I'm sure many of you know that. But did you know that the word shalom means completeness, soundness, without strife. I found that really interesting. Now, without strife makes real, makes a lot of sense to me when I think about peace is, is an experience of no strife. But completeness and soundness caught my attention. So then I went to the revealing word, which is uh, in Unity, um, Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, um, created a list of definitions of the metaphysical symbols that words and people and places um, mean to us as a way of, of understanding a deeper spirit, the deeper spiritual nature of them. Peace is defined as harmony and tranquility makes sense. Harmony and tranquility kind of goes with the idea of without strife. But then it says it's derived from the awareness of Christ consciousness. 
It's the harmony and tranquility derived from the awareness of Christ consciousness. Now, when we say the words Christ consciousness, we're really talking about a state of mind in which we're aware of our spiritual eternal nature. That's really what we mean by that Christ consciousness. It's a spiritual awareness. So where do we go for this piece? Where do we tap in to this divine attribute? And that's where we're going to talk about peace and stillness. Because we must turn within. Regardless of what's happening outside and around us. Turn within first to discover that attribute within ourselves of peace. And we do that by connecting to, awakening into our Christ awareness. That Christ, when we speak about the Christ born in us, that's what we mean. It's a state of mind, a state of awareness that we move into that is our natural state. And from there, what do we discover? But completeness and wholeness which peace is derived from. Now that's really different than just a truth. Okay, I'm going to stop fighting. Or I'm, I'm just going to walk away. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'll just let you go be what you are and whatever's happening over there. And I, I, I'll go into my quiet room. This is me. Okay, I'm going to confess a little here. <laughs> I'll just go into my quiet little room, my quiet little meditation cushion, where I can shut the world out for a moment and be and find some peace. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because that is finding peace in the stillness. And I do that, and it's a practice because it's like it's like going to the gym to exercise muscles. Right? We go to the gym because it gives us a, a, a place where that's all that's going on, and I can be focused on that intention of getting stronger. Well, when I go to my meditation spot, my sacred space, my quiet space, to turn in and to touch the stillness, I'm strengthening that within me. But it doesn't end there. Now, it's interesting. Ah, there's the slide. Thank you, Alan. Finding the still point. I had a friend who said, oh, yeah, that's my still point. Oh, I love that. We turn within to find our still point. This, for me, and this will be the next slide. Or no, I'm sorry. This is this slide. This for me is what I experience as finding my inner manger scene. You know that most of you are familiar with the manger scene for Christmas, that, that the, the baby Jesus was born in the stables because there was room at the end. And, and so imagine in the stables, there's livestock and maybe goats and cows. And then, then, then when he's born, the star is up and people are coming and going to see this new babe. So there's all this activity going on. And yet, when I move into the center where that baby lies, that child of peace, that's my still point. And everything gets quiet. And my mind shifts to a place of peace. The activity outside hasn't stopped, but I have taken that moment to allow that light to be born in me again. But as I said, I'm not meant to stay on the cushion as this meditator say. <laughs> I'll meet you on the cushion, but I'm not meant to stay there, right? I have a life to live. I'm meant to be here to live a life and to be an expression of this light in the world. 
I'm meant to be a peacemaker, as are you. And that's the message at Christmas. We're peacemakers. We're letting that child of peace be born again within us. Now that makes me feel really good. And I might be tempted to just stay in my room and feel good, but, but it wouldn't last. Because in order for that peace to be to become a whole expression, it must be expressed really into the world. And this is peace in action. Peace in action is when I take that moment and coming from there, step out, and I bring that into every circumstance I step into. Into every person I encounter, I bring that experience. Am I there 100%? No. Do I have moments of forgetting? Yes. I get in my car and somebody does something and I get, I have a moment of forgetting that child of peace. <laughs> Where's that dark child of peace? But that's all it takes, right? The moment I remember I have forgotten, I can, re I can bring it back into my awareness. So when you're going through your holiday season, think about what, what you're bringing into that experience. Because this is what is the power of peace. Peace is power. It's not wimpy. It's not neutral. It's not ineffectual. The power of peace has the power to transform not only our own lives, but the lives of others and indeed our entire world. On the next slide, I have a quote by Charles Roth, who is a unity minister. And he writes this, peace is power. Peace is power. For out of stillness, strength is born. And out of inner harmony, productivity flourishes. Out of our own inner harmony, we become productive in our lives, which means we are out manifesting good and light in this world from this inner quality of peace. And, and that to me is what Christmas is. Now that doesn't mean don't run around and enjoy your time gathering gifts and, and gathering with family, absolutely. Um, but remember, this is what we want to bring to the world right now. And oh my goodness, do we need it? We need it. We are called to be peacemakers. And so I want you to take a moment to think about how in your life you can use the power of peace. Are there places, people, activities where you're finding yourself a little less than feeling peace. I can name a few for myself. And that's okay. Those are our opportunities. Those are opportunities to step in. And, and I do this by setting an intention. When I get up in the morning and I do my spiritual reading, I set an intention for myself throughout the day to be mindful. What are my words saying? What are my thoughts saying? What are my actions saying? Are they an expression of this peace? And if they're not, I get to choose again. That's all. No guilt, no judgment. You just get to choose again. And it's incredible, incredible what can happen when you do. I was going to share a story of my family, but I think this is something, you know, so many of us have opportunities in our family <laughs> to share peaceful moments. 
Um, and I, I wanted to broaden it out a little bit more this year and say, you know, wherever there's injustice, there is not peace. So, we're, and it could be a small injustice or it could be systemic. But being peacemakers is not about avoiding those. It's not about a neutrality. It's about recognizing there's a lack of peace. Wherever there's injustice, there's a lack of peace. And then turning within to find out what is mine to do to bring peace, a real true peace, which is change, which is transformation. What is mine to do? And we'll each be called in different ways. But I invite you to ask that question. What are you called to do this Christmas as peacemakers to help transform uh, your family, your community, your spiritual center, your world? I'd like to close. Actually, I'm going to do this. I, I have this beautiful prayer that comes from a World Day of Prayer interfaith booklet that was done a few years ago. The topic was for the World Day of Prayer was peace in the midst. It has resonated with me ever since. And I keep this booklet, which is somewhere stored in a box somewhere, but I got the words to this prayer. So what I'd like to do is invite you to just settle, settle back. Let's go into a meditation and I'm going to read this prayer to you. Oh, take a moment to sit back and relax. Gently close your eyes if that's comfortable. Focus on your breath for just a moment to bring yourself fully here and now. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Turn within, focus on your heart center. If it helps visualize the light of the manger scene and that Christ child that's being born in you, that still point. And for a moment, feel the calm silence of that place. As I read this prayer, let these words resonate in that quiet spot. I am the power of peace expressed in my thoughts, releasing thoughts that separate or denigrate. I raise my consciousness to the God standard of oneness. I bring about peace through my thoughts. I am the power of peace expressed in my words. My words heal and harmonize, uplift and appreciate. Powerfully, peacefully, I speak to right wrongs and improve conditions. I bring about peace through my words. I am the power of peace expressed in my actions. Boldly, I walk a path of peace guided by inner wisdom. All that I do fosters mutual blessings. I bring about peace through my actions.
peace is in the midst of me as I become the presence of peace in the midst of every circumstance. And when you're ready, gently let your attention come back to the room, back to your breath. But the sense of peace that is within you remains. Peace is in the midst of me as I become the presence of peace in the midst of every circumstance. And so it is. Namaste. I would say feel free to stand up if you want to sing along. <laughs> Please stand and ask. 